you weren't there, um, but obviously I expect that you and your staff have put a substantial amount of energy into trying to determine what happened and how it happened uh, as you're charged with making it work right in the future. So um, I, I've got to ask about this, uh, this Tarim analysis, uh, which was done on December 3rd, 18. Again, uh, you weren't there. Uh, Mr. Barami was there. Uh, he was head of safety, and uh, he met with me and Mr. Larson, and I can't remember uh, who else might have been there, and told us this was a one-off accident in February. Yet, uh, this analysis, which I thought the staff was going to put up, uh, was, uh, thank you, uh, was available at that time. He apparently he says he was unaware of it. He knew there was such a process, but he didn't know they had evaluated this plane and this system. But this analysis says that, uh, this is post Lion Air, that in the lifetime of these aircraft in operation, uh, they predicted there would be a, a potential of 15 uh, fatal crashes. I'm not aware of any other certified transport aircraft that has such an analysis. I mean, the normal analysis is 10 to the minus 9. This far exceeds that. Uh, and I question why, um, given this tarum, and I don't know where it went uh, since it didn't go to the head of safety, uh, you know, why uh, the aircraft wasn't grounded once this analysis was done, and, as opposed to allowing the plane to fly while Boeing worked uh, on a fix. Uh, you know, uh, you know, we've talked a lot about uh, being a data-driven uh, organization with you and uh, former Administrator Elwell uh, when we had the second incident, uh, when the plane stayed up yet for another couple of days. Uh, and, uh, you know, the assumptions that were made here is uh, only one out of 100 pilots wouldn't react properly uh, and effectively in that 10-second period. Uh, yet, uh, in the two instances extant, uh, well, there were actually three. Uh, uh, you know, there was a triggering uh, which was recovered uh, in Indonesia, then there was a triggering which wasn't recovered, and then Ethiopia. So uh, we have essentially a 33% uh, success rate. Uh, but even after the first, uh, we had a 50% success rate. I, I'm, I'm just wondering, I mean, in, in retrospect, uh, do you think it should have been grounded after Lion Air? given this tarim analysis? Well, thank you for your question, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I will say at the outset, as you noted, I was not right. I'm at the FAA when this analysis was done. Uh, however, you know, I want to advocate uh, for my people and, uh, and they need, you know, we are a data-driven organization, uh, as you said. And I know this, uh, you know, with, with, all, with all due respect, you know, the, the, any indication that any level of accidents is, is acceptable in any analysis is, is not reflective of the 45,000 dedicated professionals at the FAA, whether they're involved in air traffic or aviation safety. So I want, I want to make, make that uh, abundantly clear. Um, that is absolutely our highest priority. Um, having said that, in the reason that we have the safest airspace in the U.S. Uh, in the world and uh, has been through decades of developing uh, data systems and decision-making tools that will allow us uh, to make the, the, the best decisions and prioritize in the interest of safety. So um, remember in the, the information that was available at the time, uh, was we really didn't know what the what the if, if, cause if of I, the accident If I could, was. Mr. Minister, I, I understand, but I've, I've only got 10 minutes, and I have at least a couple other questions. But so, okay, you're you're not going to say anything definitive. I would hope you would look into the distribution, of course, of this tarum. Uh, it didn't come to the attention of the head of safety. He tells us. Uh, so I don't know where it went or who had access to it. Uh, and what they may have advocated, I think it's a pretty critical thing. And again, I'm not aware of any other uh, aircraft that where this sort of analysis has, you know, found something that's going to cause 
crashes inevitably and been allowed to fly. I mean, it just doesn't meet your standards. So I appreciate uh, the fact that you're going to uh, look into that and revise that. Um, now, I want to ask uh, again, uh, you know, I'm concerned about Boeing's influence over particularly, it seems like this all stops in the regional offices. It doesn't seem, at least from, we will find out with further interviews uh, with FAA employees, but again, uh, with seven hours with Mr. Barami, he's not aware of any of the issues uh, we raised uh, outside that were decisions were made up in Washington State. Um, and there were, uh, there are two issues regarding uh, lightning protection uh, on the 8-7, uh, where uh, the plane was certified uh, for production with the lightning protection. Boeing decided to strip the lightning protection off, and after they produced 40 airplanes, uh, they came to uh, the FAA and said, oh, by the way, you certified it with lightning protection. We've taken it off. Uh, we'd like you to change uh, your decision that it's necessary. And again, uh, safety analysts objected, and in, they were overruled by a local manager. And then the rudder, uh, the rudder issue uh, was actually uh, seven safety analysts said, no, you need to relocate the rudder controls. And we do have uh, photos of what happens when you lose uh, rudder uh, controls. Uh, on an airplane, particularly on climb out or at a critical time. I wish the staff would put that slide up, please, if they're listening. Uh, and, um, you know, that's a, that's a critical thing. And they were upheld at two levels of review. So in total, uh, we had 14 people at the FAA say they should relocate or better protect uh, the rudder, uh, the rudder controls on the wing, given this large new engine uh, and the potential for uncontained failure and fragmentation. Uh, and they were overruled by a single manager, apparently again at the local level. Um, this causes concern on my part that there doesn't seem to be, and we haven't found yet, that there are levels of re review beyond the local office. Uh, are, are you uh, going to be looking at that issue or problem as part of a solution? Yes, well, uh, thank you for the question, uh, Mr. Chairman. And, uh, you know, I think that it's important to understand that as we work through these processes and when you have technical people involved in discussions, these processes by design are, uh, are encourage debate and there are differences of opinion uh, as we work through the processes. And ultimately, uh, remember that the managers who, are, who were involved uh, in these decisions are themselves experts and there are times when they may have been uh, overruled. And it's not a matter in my view of what the applicant or the manufacturer in this case wants. It's, uh, it, it's really a matter of, of letting the process uh, work and ultimately uh, the, the decision needs to be made uh, uh, you know, on behalf of the agency and on occasion that may be the manager that, that uh, has a broader view uh, that may be able to make that decision. I do think that there are some improvements that we can put in place. Aviation safety is working thank on, as I mentioned, on just thank, thank you, Mr. Minister. One last question. I'm running out of time. Do not want to abuse my privileges here. Uh, Boeing uh, self-certified and installed uh, defective slats uh, on uh, 137 airplanes, and you just announced a $4 million civil fine for this deliberate uh, abuse, uh, and we've heard a lot of other things about production pressures, and we'll hear more about that from the second panel. Um, you know, I, I'm concerned that, uh, you know, w will you look at uh, these issues, uh, and also we will hear from the second panel about concerns about whether or not sensors were installed, the AOA sensors installed properly because of production pressures, calibrated uh, properly because of production pressures. Uh, again, I, I have concern, again, that we're looking at, and I, I, I don't get the sense thus far that you're ready to go there, that we may have a captive regulatory problem in the field offices. Because uh, it, there's an awful lot of decisions uh, that have gone in Boeing's favor, overruling a whole lot. The 787 had a safety specialist say, hey, you can't put a lithium battery in that plane without putting it in a steel box and venting it over the side. Overruled. Guess what? Plane gets grounded for two months because, hey, you've got to put it in a steel box and bend it over the side. There's been an awful lot of people who seem to have been pressing it and right, 
And the question is, maybe we need, you know, this needs to go beyond the local office when we're talking about safety critical systems. So, and with that, uh, I've run out of time, but I hope you'll look at that issue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Administrator. Uh,